Hey guys, so today I want to talk a little bit about skill floor and skill ceiling. A lot of times people will ask the question, is this a difficult hero or what is the most difficult hero? What is the most easy hero? And I always think that the terms easy and difficult are pretty subjective, but not just on that. They're also a little difficult to explain in terms of... Uh, this hero might be easy to play generally, but to get a lot of value, it might be a little bit tricky. For example, I'm going to use Varian. Varian in taunt build is one of the more easier heroes to pick up in terms of tanks. The challenge about Varian, though, is that he is a little bit interesting because while his mechanics are very easy, let's say, for instance, you're just tanking, you're blocking shots for your team, pretty easy, and you want to go in, you press E, you press R, you press Q, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. He's one of the easier tanks to play purely because he's so point and click. If you're aiming at someone, you're going to be able to stun them. If you stun them, it's a decent length stun for your team to follow up on. But that's just about all that he has going for him. However, there's too many times where I'll see people charge in, they'll stun, and it won't lead to a kill, and then they'll be in a bad position and they'll die. Which explains the difference between a skill floor of the simplicity of a hero, which is pretty much just their abilities of uh, charge, stun, ability, and attack. That's the skill floor. The skill ceiling is understanding when to charge, when to use your abilities, when to charge in and possibly queue back out for the slows or when to charge in taunt back out so that you can walk them closer to your area. A great example of this is if I was to walk up on this Arthas, I could taunt him and then I could bring him into my base. Uh, there's a variety of other things that can be a little bit more challenging, which is what is the skill ceiling. Another example of this is Li Ming. Uh, I like to use Li Ming as an example a lot of times when I'm coaching people because Li Ming is one of those heroes where all of her abilities are pretty simple when you actually look at them in just their general idea. So her skill floor is very low. The skill floor to me is by definition the lowest amount of skill required to add any sort of value to your team. Well, Li Ming has a very low skill floor because all of her abilities are pretty easy to aim. You see someone here, you throw an ability, you throw an ability, and then you can just simply auto attack until your abilities are up, you throw an ability, and her skill floor is very, very low, making her an easy hero to pick up. However, I've talked about the four mistakes you might be making on Li Ming, like throwing out your abilities wrong to clear waves, like not throwing out your abilities uh, to lead the target. Uh, and one of the ones that I never really mentioned, but is one that I often find is a mistake now after watching people, is they don't throw their abilities from Fog of War to where they're hard to follow up from. For example, if you see that the enemy laner is in this area, you can throw your abilities from over here and it'll be harder for him to dodge because he doesn't see where they're coming from. So there's a lot of different tricks that you can use on Li Ming to make it to where she's much, much more impactful than just playing her to the bare minimum. Which makes it to where she's a hero with a very low skill floor, yet a very high skill ceiling. Skill ceiling I define as the ultimate highest amount of... of impact you can get from a hero. Whether that's someone who's landing all of their abilities and killing people left and right, or someone who just knows all the little tricks for setting up a variety of kills. If you're using your hero to the 100%, that is the skill ceiling. And I think the majority of the heroes in Heroes of the Storm have a very great learning curve, which makes it to where they're very accessible and a lot of people call it a very easy game. Because the majority of the heroes in this game have a very small or very low skill floor, while they have a very... I would say medium to high skill ceiling. Some of the heroes with the highest skill ceiling is Hanzo. While Hanzo's skill floor is also a little bit higher purely because while you can be somewhat impactful by just landing simple auto attacks, he does require a decent amount of finesse. However, a very good Hanzo will be very quick at landing W's that will always hit the targets that they want. And they'll know a position to where they always will land their W's to where they will hit them all the time. 
For example, they can quickly do bursts that are always going to be dealing multiple shots to the same target, getting large amounts of burst off on who they want to very quickly, able to blow apart mages very, very fast. This being able to quickly move and use all of your abilities to be able to blow up someone is a very, very important thing. And if you're not utilizing this, you're likely going to find yourself with a lower win rate on these heroes. And that's also something that's really interesting about skill floor and skill ceiling is the win rates are not based off of either one of those. A lot of times you don't need to reach the skill ceiling to have a high win rate with a hero. You just need to be impactful in your own way. But you also need to be much higher than the skill floor as just being at the skill floor is probably going to cause your hero to have a much lower win rate. You can kind of see this as a... Sorry, I was listening to a, a, a song. Um... You can also see this in hot slogs. If you ever go to hot slogs and you sort by, uh, where is it? Uh, hero and, or here it is, hero and map statistics. If you ever go in here and you look by like high win rate heroes or low win rate heroes and you look at different ranks, it's kind of interesting to see that when you get into masters, a lot of high skill floor heroes will have higher win rates. But it, down in lower ranks, a lot of low skill floor heroes will have uh, higher win rates. And it is taking forever to load. Uh, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys an example. Let me just bump this up to the last four weeks. And let's go into just bronze and silver. And what we see is from the popularity, let's go win percentage, sorry. We see Lily, who's a pretty easy hero to play, has a high popularity and a high win rate for this area. We see Rainer, who has a low skill floor, pretty easy to play, high popularity, high win rate. Now, down at the bottom, we're going to see heroes like Tassadar, we're going to see heroes like Genji and Hanzo being at the bottom of the barrel. Yet, if we go into the same thing, we ditch silver and bronze, go to masters and diamond, and now we go into this, we can go through and we can find Hanzo, and oh, Hanzo's pretty low still, but Genji, we see he got a large bump up in win rate. Uh, we also see that some of the heroes like Lili, for example, has dropped down considerably in terms of how many heroes are ahead of her. And it's just kind of a fun thing. Let me ditch even diamond out of this for a second i don't want to see where hanzo ended up because i don't think hanzo yeah hanzo's a lot higher win right now sorry uh there we go we can see that when you get up in the masters hanzo and genji become these uh very very scary heroes and you start seeing people like lili who will drop down in win rate quite a lot uh in terms of how many heroes are above them so that gives you quite a an idea of how skill floor and skill ceiling works. And in general, when someone asks, is a character easy? You could say, well, their learning curve's not too bad. Their skill floor is pretty low, uh, but their skill ceiling is pretty high. Lili is actually one of those examples for me that she's probably the easiest hero to pick up in the game. But there are a lot of things that you can do to make Lili shine a little bit more than you might think. Same with a few other heroes like Rainer. The better you get at stutter stepping, while he's a pretty effective hero with the low skill floor, he has a pretty high skill ceiling by making sure that you're constantly stutter stepping, you're constantly not knocking people away with your Q, but instead knowing exactly how much to finish people. And all of those are different things that will really bring their your, your heroes forward. So once again, if someone ever asks if a hero is hard or difficult, now you know that there's more than one way to answer of yes or no, and that's subjective or whatever. You can answer with, well, I personally believe that they're easy to pick up, hard to master. And I think the majority of the people in Heroes of the Storm are, are like that. There are a few exceptions. Like, I would say that Kel'Thuzad is one of those with a very high skill floor and a relatively mediocre skill ceiling. Why do I say that? Because once you can learn his combos, uh, in general, there's not too much else you can do. There's a variety of combos that you can land, and once you get very good at them, that's kind of the peak of what Kel'Thuzad can do. Uh, and, and there's other heroes that have different options like that as well. 
Anywho, uh, let me know in the comments below. Are there certain heroes that are deceptively hard that a lot of people say are easy but are actually tricky? Are there heroes that are uh, deceptively easy where people say, oh, they're really difficult, but then when you actually sit down and start playing with them, you realize they're not that hard? Love to hear it in the comments below, but be civil. This could be one of those things that's very subjective, and there's no point in arguing with anyone else over any of these. Thank you for watching.